I think it's loading up. All right, I think we should be live now. So hi, everyone, and hi, Michael. How are you doing? Hi, hello, EmacsConf. I'm pretty excited to be live at this year's EmacsConf and getting a chance to talk about my favorite program or our favorite program. Um, well, yeah, I'm doing pretty fine, and I'm excited. Well, so are so... we. So without further ado, uh, the floor is yours. Present for as much as you want. We've already discussed the timings. So I'll let you on your own. OK, so let's get started. The topic of the talk is the browser in a buffer or Poltis, a periodic web weaver. Poltis is a kind of spider. And the name of the project I'm going to show you. Um, but first, let's set the stage for this project. Here we have Emacs I'm presenting from, from, and here we have Firefox I'm inside, and there's a video. OK, let's do this. Don't do the inception. Put it over there somewhere. OK. So here's Firefox. It's not, it's it's in a buffer, but it's pretty disconnected from Emacs. It's um, in an XVM, WM buffer. So you can use it from inside Emacs, but they don't talk. Emacs, Emacs doesn't talk to the browser, and the browser doesn't talk back. And I'm going to show you something that changes this. But first, I think for many of you, it's the same. Like There's Emacs, and the other important program is the browser. So how do you do something? Let's continue with the stage. We have some research session. We have this. Emacs Conf we found this year, and there are a lot of talks. This is the one we're watching right now, and let's have a look. What else is interesting? Ah, hmm. uh, this was yesterday, so have a look at today. There is a world of possibilities. That sounds great. Oh, that is right now. So, greetings to you. Yes, the browser and the buffer, and other stuff. So. Now we have a lot of talks tabs open, and we're going to go back to Emacs. I can't switch buffers in a dedicated window, so apparently I can't do that. Here's Emacs again. Um, now I'm in Emacs, and I want to have something from my browser, maybe um, like the open tabs, or I want to annotate them. I'm in org mode right now, so why I would like to do it from org mode, maybe. How do I get the tab? OK, let's tap back. I want to annotate this page. Let's get the link, put it here. Oh, that wasn't a link. That was something totally different. So let's lose the mouse. There's the link. Now we could put a title, and so on. What I'm showing you here is it is pretty, no, it's not too difficult, but it could be easier interacting with the browser. And there are helpers to do something like this. I had, for example, I used for a long time this extension. It's called export tabs URLs. And you got a list of your tabs, and you can just copy them to clipboard. So now we have the tabs, copy them to clipboard. And there they are. So now we can do something with the tabs, rearrange them, take notes, and so on. OK. And there's even other stuff I, for uh, while researching for this talk and this extension. I found this tab session manager where you can have a look at your tabs. It does snapshots. It exports it in. A gazillion different formats, and yeah, that's even more luxurious, no better. But it's still not an Emacs. Okay, so how could we get it into Emacs? Maybe this thing called Poltis could help. So the theme is from a browser extension and a manual or work workflow, as I showed you um, right now, we want to go to an interactive Emacs interface. How to deal with the browser and its tabs from inside Emacs. And 
we're gonna do just that right now. So we had this research session over there. So now it's the demo time. We had this research session. Let's open it again. Here is it. And now we want to do it from inside Emacs. We say, please Emacs insert this, or please pull this, insert this. And now we have the browser session inside Emacs. It's a little bit roomy, so you can see it over the internet. Um, and we learned that Big Boo button doesn't set a title or has a new line in it. I'm not actually sure what happened here. So let's have this browser session. And what can we do with it? For once, you it's just um, you can just copy stuff here. You can take notes, and it updates with the browser. If you change something in the browser, maybe switch these tabs. They switch over there. Or you say, okay, I don't want to have a, uh, I, I don't want to have hyper drive in here, and I don't know the, don't need the instructions for speakers because I'm not a speaker. So I have a live sync to Emacs from the browser in this org mode interface, and we can do more stuff with it. For example, we could. Um, I already showed you how to rearrange stuff. We can open new tabs. We can have a look at, let's say, Emacs Conf again. And there it is updating. And now it's, there's a new tab. Add another one. OK. So I think you get the gist. Now let's take a note on this. This conference sounds interesting. Have a look, maybe. Thumbs up. OK, I can do this. So now there's a link, uh, not a link, a note. If I close it and reopen it, there's the note again. So we have persistent notes for browser tabs. Or not actually browser tabs, it's actually URLs. Here's the browser tab. I'm going to open another URL. No, it's not without a note. Going back, the note is back there. That's how far I can show you Poltis, because um, the interface isn't finished otherwise. But the backend is pretty cool, and I'm going to tell you more about that. The interface is right now just browser interaction one way from the browser into org mode, an org mode interface, and it has nodes. But it's not too difficult to imagine, for example, adding tags or I just remembered something. OK. So for example, adding tags or scheduling information or what else, all the stuff you do with, with org mode. Or go the other way around and sync from the org mode buffer to the browser. So I could delete this heading or rename it or stuff like this, and it's reflected in the browser. I'm not going to do it right now because it's not implemented. But just to give you an outlook of the possibilities. Good. So let's leave this browser session here. Browser session below. OK. It's still working if we um, change the outline structure or stuff like this. So get the browser back. Debugging. Here, yeah, this talks. I could change something here. Go back to the talks page. And still working. Good. Now I showed you what it does. It's, and what can you use it for? Or what 
is it intended to be used for if it's finished because it isn't finished as i said um, manage your open tabs so for example my use case is um, i do something have a big collection of tabs open and then i need ram i this um pc here has just four gigabyte of it so sometimes i need to close the browser to I don't have to close the PC. Um, and in this case, I'd like to save the session. And so far, I just copied this clipboard thing I showed you earlier in an org mode and captured it away. And this should be the future for this workflow. You just capture the browser session, rearrange it however you like it, and then you make make it offline. So this is a thing I didn't show you. You can, um, if you are looking here, you can, you see that this heading is open in tab 37, window one. So if you would remove this, um, it's offline. And you keep just the org structure. It's a simple text file then. And the planned future feature is, to go back to um, to the online state. So you have a session, maybe a browser window, you save it to org mode, close the window, and some days later or weeks later, re you, you return to this research session, maybe something about Emacs or whatever spikes your interest. And you can just reopen it from the browser, uh, from org mode. So org mode becomes the controller of the browser. And it's not it doesn't have to be org mode, but for the demo purpose, um, org mode was the most easy interface. No, actually, not that easy. I don't know if you are doing more complex um, interactive stuff in org mode, but there's some tricky edge cases. I just finished this demo half an hour ago, maybe an hour ago, and I'm really lucky that it worked in the end. Org mode, pretty great. So maybe you could do another interface, does not matter. Easy access to more info from inside Emacs. Yeah, of course you can imagine like we have just the title URL here, but you could even get at the text of the buffer. I'd show you in the, in the how is it done section. Managing research session tab groups. I already showed you this and browse all your links I also showed you. So let's go over to how is it done? How is it done then? I mix, okay. So um, it should be quite apparent that somehow the browser has to sync its state to Emacs and Emacs has to know about the browser and there's like a bi-directional state synchronization going on here. And there's a browser side and an Emacs side. The browser side is a add-on, a web extension add-on. I first tried to do to use WebDriver by die. I don't know if if you know it. You open an, a web socket and then you can talk to the browser, but it was so frustrating to actually get it to do what I wanted to do that I changed to the web extension. And this wasn't that much better, but I finally had all the features I needed because web, uh, web driver is like all in flux and you have to look at the Firefox bug tracker. Do they have implemented this already? And no, most often they don't. So now it's a web extension add-on and it just tells Emacs little facts about the browser. And uh, for you to make, to that this facts make more sense for you, I think I have to explain how the Emacs side of this works. So the Emacs side, at first I think I thought I made make it quite um, simple and then I over-engineered it. And now it's great, but also not finished. So the Emacs site is a database. It's a triple store or RDF database. Um, it stores all information in triples. So you have a subject 
subject predicate and an object and you can query this database for those of you who watched last year's talk of andrew hired about sql in emacs he um, presented such a database if you want to have a closer look and sorry andrew i didn't use yours i had to make my own i'm not sure it's better but it was fun and it has some different design decisions for those of you who don't know what's up with a database like this maybe you know uh, web apps like um, all these new org mode clones um, uh, how are they called? Obsidian, Rome, and so on and so on. All of these are possible because I don't know if, if Obsidian too, but stuff like Rome is possible because they have a triple store in the browser and use this to power their knowledge base. And if you have a, had a look at Org Rome, you know it uses um, a database too because if this knowledge gets bigger database is better to handle and now here's a triplet store or a database to manage your browser session inside emacs but it's not limited to browser session you could do nodes and stuff i don't have a project for this but you can um, look at uh, this project from Andrew Hyatt. He has a pretty interesting notes project. So here's it in Emacs. There's the link. You can have a look. Mm, OK, so now we have this database in Emacs. It's it's possible to do something in, like this in Emacs now because um, the database has uh, Emacs has SQLite integrated and the browser add a uh, logs inside into this database via emacs it sends emacs um it connects to emacs via web socket socket emacs is the web socket server and then it sends little snippets like um, this window shows shows these tabs or this tab shows this URL. And Emacs has triggers in this database. It can install ELISP triggers, and the trigger um, power the org mode front end. OK, so that's how it's done. It's not finished, but it does something. Now I want to do some closing remarks, and maybe some more remarks. First off. An interesting concept I thought up while um, implementing this is GC garbage collect. For all you fans of dynamic languages, you know what that garbage to collect is. And Emacs users probably know it. Um, cleans up after you. You're using this Emacs and you're making lots of little objects. And some after some time, Emacs says, OK, I'm doing some cleanup for you. That's garbage collect. And I thought, why not have garbage collect for the browser? You're doing this browsing and opening all these tabs. And after some times, there are lots of tabs and someone has to close them. So there's the C programmers. They do all the closing themselves and they're really meticulous. But it takes some time. And there's like my style. I <laughs> just uh, let it um, collect stuff. And after some times, I close the browser and start a new one. And now there's the garbage collect that says, let it collect, the let the browser collect, and then garbage collect. Let's say every morning the browser closes, Emacs closes all the browser tabs, but it keeps the information. And it keeps tags. Maybe you said like a tag yesterday, like reading. I want to read this. And next time, and then after that, it's in the reading list. So garbage collect or compaction, however you wanted to know this. Package. One thing I thought of while doing this is also, oh, my time's up. So we're almost at Q&A. 
one last thing this whole project or program works via the Emacs event loop. So there's an, a server listening for the browser, waiting um, for infos from it. It works quite fine. I wasn't sure how much um, performance it will cost the browser, uh, Emacs, but it works fine. But I wonder what's the limits of Emacs event loop. loop. Like, can I go on forever adding server stuff? How big a server can Emacs get? I don't know. Uh, so that's some open questions to ponder. With that, thank you for listening and for your interest. I'd be pretty delighted to take some questions now. Great. Well, thank you so much, Michael. Thanks for the talk. And also, thanks for going a little more in depth at the end. Uh, is that what the um, extra stuff that you wanted to mention? Is it what you've done just now? Sorry, I didn't understand your last your, your question. When we were preparing for your presentation, which is live, uh, you told me that you wanted to go perhaps a little more in depth into like the garbage collection. Is it what you wanted to do, or do you still have some more to tell us about? I could tell more in depth. Yes, garbage collection is just an idea. It's it's maybe I don't know. Okay, great. Are there questions? If there are questions. That's why we have about thirteen minutes to answer as many questions as possible. Uh, by the way, sorry for the uh, for the people who were watching the presentation. There's been a little bit of manipulation trying to get uh, all the screens in order, but it's because I've got a very shitty ping. Uh, to the streaming service that we use currently. <laughs> so oh, bear okay. with me as I compose it everything. But don't well, worry, Michael, everything will be very clean once we publish it afterwards. So uh, uh, what I'm going to do... Well, well, at I... my end. <laughs> Sorry, could you repeat? So it was not at my end because my internet connection is not the best one either. No, absolutely not. Oh, but by the way, this reminds me, as I am compositing the windows, you might remember in the talk by Bob earlier today, I said, oh, there's a phone vibrating. <laughs> I thought it was coming from the big blue button, like the room in which we are right now. And I wasn't hallucinating, just to be clear. It's just that one of the co-organizers behind on Mumble had their phone vibrating, and I was very confused. Anyway, that's for the... Ah, uh, OK. OK, so everything is set up yeah, now. So what I'm going to do, Michael, I'm going to, if you're OK with this, can I read you the question from the pad? And can you answer them? Yes, of course. I would love to. OK, lovely. I'm going to try my best yeah. to display the questions on the stream. Give me just a second. And in the meantime, I'll read you the first one. So have you seen the next browser? It is the Emacs of web browsers and would probably be easier to work with as it matches a lot closer to Emacs. I think you can tag your browser tabs, for example. Yes, I, I saw it. I never tried it. I think you can do all the stuff. And I think it's pretty good idea to use it if you want, because um, have a look at this. This lovely thing is JavaScript. And it's the um, browser side. It was quite tricky to get working. So maybe it's e easier if you use Nixt. But I like to use Firefox. And uh, yeah, there's, there has to be a solution for Firefox too, I think. So next question, right. please. Lovely. All right, so nice ideas. Uh, need a, needs a better name, though, to attract people to it. What about Browsys or WebNote? Uh, Browsys spelled B-R-O-W-S-Y-S -S, or WebNote, clearer, this one. WebNote and Browsys? Uh, with a Y, yes. So instead of an I, a Y. Oh, OK. Yes, why not? I take note. The names may be a little bit confusing. It's the name of a spider. It's like a spy, but a spider that does an orb web. I found it via Wikipedia. I just wanted to have like something with a web because it's weaving something and there's also the web involved. I'm not set on the name. I'm not even set on the project yet how it will turn out. So what you're seeing now is something else than what I imagined when I was planning this talk. Yeah. 
that's right. Keep an open mind. Next question. You know what I'm going to say about the marketing of uh, project names? You know, they're not, they don't make sense and they're not popular until they actually are. Like, what would have predestined Maggot to work as a name? Perhaps nothing. Yes. I mean, it felt close to magic or Maggot, depending on the people you ask. So, you know, maybe your name, Portis, will be a, a, a household name, give or take six months or a year. Yes, maybe. Because All right, moving on to the next question. Oh, unless you want to add something. To, to expand a little bit on this name, I'm not sure where the the um, where it stops. Like, is it really is just about the browser? What I just built is something more. So I'm not sure if I should limit the name here. Okay, now let's go on. You know what? Uh, you know what they say about programming. There's only one fundamental problem. No, sorry, two fundamental problems: uh, garbage collection and naming things. So you're stuck in the second one, and you mentioned the first one as well. <laughs> yeah. All right. Moving on to the next question: Can you use browser extensions with this? Example: uBlock, SponsorBlock, or Dark Reader. Yes, of course. I think someone was maybe a little bit confused that the browser is inside Emacs. Um, this is something totally normal for us XWM users. It's like every program for me is inside Emacs. This is just a normal Firefox. It just have, doesn't have like the pro window decoration. So there's, of course, there's, um, no, this is the ad blocker. I don't know why it's not working here. But you can have all you have in Firefox. OK. OK, lovely. Can... Um, are you ready to move on to the next question, or did you want to add something else? Yes, next question, please. All right. So are there any inherent security issues with this, like bidirectional synchronization? Sounds like a possible issue. How are they solved? Can a malicious website impact Emacs or the host system? No. The website has no no intro. Uh, it, it can do little 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 stuff. There's this um, this uh, it's an it's a web extension. It's an, a browser extension inside the browser, and it has like a limited interface. It uses a web extension API. There's a tabs API. You can um, listen on tabs. Where is it? Here you can tabs browser tabs. Please notify me if there's one created, updated, moved, detached, attached, removed. So the people, I think, working at Google Chrome um, put some thought into it. And they're, at least this part seems quite well designed. OK, next question, please. All right. So when do you think you'll make a first release? I hate needing browser extensions and would love to control my tabs in Emacs. <laughs> Yes, I don't know. I would like to do it soon, but I have stuff to do. And this is not the simplest project. So what I can tell you, I will do, uh, I will put the code online like in the next days, maybe even next week, because it's, it's, it's not pretty, but it's also not bad. And there's a lot of stuff there already. And for those who don't mind looking at um, unfinished things for inspiration or maybe their own work, um, I want to put it online. And if it's released, I will do some some bigger announcement. Yeah. And if it gets ready, cool, it's ready. I will be back at Emacs Conf, or Conf of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, no pressure next year. You need to have it released, and you'll need to, to give us a GitHub page. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to the next question. What happened to the Sway Compositor you showed last year? Yeah, that's like, <laughs> this is that's the perfect um, question for like after the last one. It's also <laughs> not finished. And it's also not finished because while I did a tech demo, like I did the, this time, I'm sorry, it's not finished, but I don't have that big a need for it. And it's a lot of work to get it finished. Um, because it's a similar architecture, like this different um, server clients architecture stuff, and Emacs is still in the callback um, callback hell time, as you as as you call it. <laughs> so it's not that easy to get it working, and I don't have that much need for a valent um, window manager because the other one still works. 
and there's more interesting stuff to do. But also, I know it's it has a lot of potential if it works and if it is released. And I know a lot of people are waiting for it, so I have it in the back of my mind. And if someone else feels compelled, please um, take a, a look at the code and do something. Yeah, whoever asked the question, this is your task now. <laughs> All right, moving on to the last question. We have about four minutes left, so it looks like we are. <laughs> By the way, Michael was worried that he wouldn't have many questions to answer, and I am very proud to say uh, and to prove you wrong. <laughs> All right, next question. Does the browser have to be Firefox for syncing, or is there a choice there? I think it's not. There's a choice. You can use any browser who um, supports web extensions. I think it's like a standardized interface. You can use yeah, any browser who does it. Chrome does it. But they're moving to a new web extension API to block ad blockers. I don't know if that does any turmoil for my extension. And I frankly don't care that much. All right, fair answer. Uh, I don't see anyone who's joined us on BBB. By the way, we're going to move on with the stream to the next talk. But if you've got any questions for, for Michael, feel free to join on BBB and ask your questions. I've said before that people tend to be shy and only join when the stream goes to a next talk. But I like to remind those people, eventually, those talks are going to be published. Obviously, we'll make sure that nothing private was divulged during these discussions. But you know, it's if you can muster up the courage to go on the scene, it's always nice to have people uh, join and ask questions. Uh, Michael, we have about three minutes left. Do you have any last words or perhaps uh, anything to add on what you've presented today? Yeah, I just thought about maybe I show something. Um, so there's this poultice. Um, another thing, I, I if someone has some more names, I would be quite interested because naming stuff is difficult. And this defines the database. There's the database definition. I call the database thingy, it's called Sponty. So <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking about this name. So I am saying I want to have a database. It's called, uh, it's this database. And then I define the database and I define the subject predicate object. So I have a browser session. Browser session has tabs. A tab has uh, it comes from another tab maybe, or it shows a URL. A window. A session can also have a window. A window shows tabs. And then you can annotate stuff. You can say, okay, I have a node or a URL, and I can tag it with a title, date, tag, or with another node, or with body text. And I have an environment that's like a machine, My the PC this is running on, or Emacs itself. And then you have stuff about the machine, and you have a client. This is the process session, actually. So maybe I should change this. OK, and one last thing. I have something I wanted to show you, but I didn't finish in time. OK, but Michael, just to be clear, you've got only one minute left. <laughs> Yes, it's not that difficult. I wanted to integrate um, highlight. You just go to a web page, highlight stuff, do a right click, and then you say save to Emacs. And you saved it to Emacs, and it's there inside the node. But no, this one is not finished yet. You could do it live, but there's no time left. So thank you for watching. Yes, and thank you so much, Michael, for taking the time to present and to answer the questions. Uh, the stream is going to move to the next talk in about 45 seconds. Uh, it's a talk by Wasim Massa, uh, which I'm very excited about. And other than that, uh, Michael, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you again next year with new GitHub repositories to share with us, right? <laughs> no pressure. Yes. And on that note, I'll wish you a very good day, and I'll see you next time, I suppose. Yes, of course. I would like to do it next time again. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. All right. Okay. Bye bye, Michael. Bye bye, and thanks. <laughs>